And also in the news, the uh, chairman of the All Progressive Congress, APC, caretaker and extraordinary national convention planning committee, and Yobe State Governor, May Malabuni, has congratulated party members as well as the people of Ondo State for the party's victory in the just-concluded Ondo election. Mr. Boni, who stated this during an address to newsmen and the party members, added that the party's victory in the polls signifies the people's mandate and thanked them for putting their trust in the APC. He, however, commended the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, as well as security agencies for the smooth conduct of the election. With the conclusion of the Ondo State Governorship election, I sincerely express my gratitude to Almighty God for the peaceful conduct of the election across the state. That in spite of the fear of violence entertained in some quarters, the good people of Ondo State conducted themselves peacefully to elect their governor for the next four years. I want to specially congratulate you, the people of Ondo State, because this is your victory. I also thank you very much for renewing your mandate and putting your trust in all Progressive Congress for the next four years. I want to assure you that you made the right choice as the party and His Excellency Governor Rotimi Akredolu values this trust and will not disappoint you. I therefore enjoin all stakeholders, party members and supporters to promote teamwork in all future endeavors for the party's success. To the Independent National Electoral Commission, security agencies, local and international observers, you have been professional and eth ethical in the discharge of your responsibilities. I am convinced that through genuine cooperation, we can always improve the electioneering process in Nigeria to build a strong democracy. Joining us now in the studio is Plus TV Africa's senior correspondent, Amadine Uyi, to give us his impression of the entire exercise in Ondo State and other issues coming uh, from the elections. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Felicity. Uh, happy to see you safe and sound. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we All thought right. there would be gunfire in Ondo, but we are happy. It was peaceful. No, let's, let's talk about the, the turnout, first of all. What was your impression? I think uh, Nigeria is evolving because if we go back from Edo into Ondo, unlike before, we had issues of voter apathy. But in the last two elections, you have seen Nigerians come out to cast their votes, meaning they are getting to believe that the system will work. And not just believing that the system will work, they are also insisting that it should work. Edo turnout was impressive. Uh, Ondo, first of all, Edo, we thought uh, youths would not come out. But even the PDP will say that the youths won them that election. Then from there we transgressed, we, we, we moved to uh, Ondo. And the same thing. In fact, right from the time uh, the Plus TV team got into Akure, you could feel that everybody was interested in the elections. I remember those days you go and cover elections. In the morning, you see young boys playing football on the streets. Are you not going to vote? They say, leave it. Our votes will not count. But this time, everybody was interested. They came out to vote. After the voting process, they waited to ensure that the votes were counted. There are loads of issues coming yes. off that election. Um, the picture you're painting, which is quite uh, commendable in the first instance, young people taking interest in elections, but there are major concerns about security um, in the Ondo uh, election. Uh, some people making comparison between what happened in Edo and what happened in Ondo think that the, I mean, the, the level of violence ahead of the Ondo governorship election was a little unexpected. Do you agree? I don't think so. If you look at uh, the uh, Ondo election, you had three major candidates. Remember that before the polls, there was also already a crisis in the state between the state governor and his deputy, who decamped to the People's Democratic Party, could not get the ticket, then decamped to the Zenith Labour Party. And 
because there was already a crisis, a political situation in the states, there was no way it would not, it would not lead to the build-up of the polls. Now, for the Undo elections, you had three major candidates. You had the candidate of the All Progressives Congress, the APC, who is the incumbent governor. You had the candidate of the People's Democratic Party, uh, Itayo Jegede, who happened to come from the state capital, according the most populous community in Undo state. Then you now had the, de the former deputy who had decamped to the Zenit Labour Party, who also comes from another distant uh, community that they are not sparse. He was from Ondo, he is from Ondo town. And Ondo is not a one community state. Ondo is a large state that has several towns and communities, thriving towns and communities. So what do you get? You now have three major contenders fighting for the number one seat. So there was no way the election would not be heated. Now, we must commend security operatives because during the election, they ensured. Because one thing is, during elections, if you can stop talks from moving, you can reduce violence. The military were part of the election, but you observe that nobody has, has talked about the military in all this because they, they were at their, at their places that were assigned. Mount the major expresses, don't come to the polling booths. You get it? Don't come to the polling booths. So they were there checking to ensure that only accredited voters, people who had a business or the other, were free to move around. So you say that, yes, it was heated prior to the election, but on the election day, uh, it's not only the security agencies that are responsible. All right, let, let's look at the issue of um, INEC you know, sensitive materials get into locations on time. Uh, if you make a comparison between what, because you were in bo at both uh, venues, Edoa and Oundo, if you make a comparison, uh, what would you say? Was there an improvement or is there some areas that still need work done? I think INEC improved in his deployment for Undo. Let me tell you why. Edo and Undo, they are almost similar, but Undo is more complex. Edo, you have about two no, notable riverine communities. You have the Ologo area and you have the just speaking area of Ovia Southwest. Now, INEC was able to deploy, but people still complained that elections did not start. We couldn't visit all polling units, but there were many polling units that election did not start by 8 and 8.30 for whatever reasons. These complaints were pushed to the commission. But Undo, Undo, you have a very large riverine community. You have SLDO, the largest speaking part. Those are very large communities. During the movement of materials to these communities, remember there was a boat mishap at SLDO. People thought, some of us who were on ground, we thought that, wow, this was going to affect the elections. But thanks to the, the ingenuity of INEC, as those materials were being moved, they carried the professional, the Nigerian Navy to go with them. So when there was that boat mishap, the Navy, they are sea people, they quickly rescued INEX staff involved and rescued the materials. And because the materials were rescued, they continued their movement to SLDO. So the election was not affected. At a point in time, we thought the election in that local government was going to be affected. But the INEX State resident electoral, electoral commissioner spoke to the press and said, No, all things, no life lost. The Navy were able to help us uh, stop any uh, bad occurrence that was expected. So, uh, elections now, because Undo has about 3,009, I think about 3,009 polling uh, units. 3,009 is a large number. I tell Indeed people, it is. Yes, yeah. it is. 3,009 polling units. Materials were deployed. Undo Town, uh, Akure, uh, Owo Town, uh, the largest speaking areas. So, so I would say that INEX stepped up his game from Edo election because Edo people had complained that yes, but some places did not receive materials. All right. Okay. I, I also want to. I want to also get your thoughts on the other details. Still talking about INEC now. Um, the card reader. Um, how did 
those things also play out? You know, are there, have, have they also been able to fine tune those little details of the electoral process? Okay, now if you followed INEC from the the point, uh, it's INEC set out a work plan to the election proper because the election actually ends does not even end after collation of results. There will be a review and the rest. Now, what INEC did was at every polling, most polling units, they had technicians, INEC staff who were trained, so that if there was a malfunction in any of the equipment, yes. the card reader, like what happened at Jegedes polling unit, who were there at the cathedral uh, primary school in Akure, he came, the card reader malfunctioned, but the INEC technicians quickly went and he spent between 10 to 15 minutes and voted. Unlike before, when the card reader malfunctions, there's nobody to fix it. You certainly are full of praises for um, no, the it's umpire not because, today. because see, there, there, there's been an improvement. Yes, because really. where INEC goes wrong, we we'll say they have gone wrong. Just like Edo election, we after the election, we we began to ask INEC questions. That why is it that even within Benin City, some uh, some uh, polling units did not start their process by 8 o'clock. And the chairman promised that we are going to upgrade and we are going to review. And Ondo just came the next month. And there was that Yes, and so there was that right, let, let, Let's look at the issue of vote buying. We've been having the conversation since the election here on Plus TV Africa. Vote buying allegation back and forth. I mean, what, is, what, what did you see on the ground? Okay. On the ground, uh, unfortunately, the press are not trained to uh, detect vote buying, except is very. But because we worked with several civil society organizations who, in the past, have been able to make their mark in election observation and the rest, the, uh, the transition monitoring group, the Center for Democracy, Yaga Africa, and the rest, yes. they said they witnessed vote buying. Like what uh, Idayat Hassan of the Center for Democracy said was that, uh, in fact, that the politicians try to also up their game. Unlike before, it's the agents that will, the agents on ground will monitor people voting and then give you money. But this time, they, they just, according to the CDD, that they just send somebody uh, in the crowd who you would think is a voter, but is lobbying people, and that uh, uh, if you vote, I'll give you. And most polling units, the, the areas where they were disbursing the money, we saw, in, in all fairness, we saw officials of the Economic and uh, Financial Crimes Commission who had said that they will, they will monitor vote buying. But I think this time the politicians beat them to their game. Because if the, civil, if the election observation group said that there was still widespread vote buying, in fact, it was all parties were involved. Let's not be deceived. It's not just one party. Because I heard that when you offer 2,000, the other person will offer 3,000. When you offer five, the other person will offer 7,000. If you offer 7,000, the other person will offer 10,000. So they were trying to outbid themselves. And in fact, what the CDD said was that it was so, so sophisticated that there was even block vote buying. Not just on an individual basis. What does block vote buying mean? Block vote buying means you are not coming as an individual. You are coming as a group. A group comes and says, okay, we have this group of 20 people who are going to vote. I assure you we have all agreed. You lead them. They will not pay you block money. Maybe 150,000 yes. or maybe 200. And the entire has I said that it was so bad that some people were even doing transfers. As we just show, they will transfer. That some of their election observers even heard voters complaining. So is, aren't, the, aren't these things big enough, you know, for INEC to, to spot um, as issues in the election? So why do we keep ignoring these factors here and there? No, the, the truth about the matter is that on election days, INEC, you see, election is just not a one-person affair. It involves everybody. That is why there's military deployment, there's police deployment, there's uh, EFCC deployment. Then even the citizens also have to watch. You recall in Edo State, there was a situation where 
Uh, so it, it even happened in Ondo where police had to rescue somebody who some of the uh, voters found out that he was trying to lure people to buy their votes. They pounced on him. What, what, where do we go from here? What really, in your thinking, your many years of covering elections in Nigeria, will we ever get to the point where vote buying will never, uh, will not be such an issue anymore? Um, you, from what you said, it, people don't really seem to be getting wiser when it comes to vote buying. Now, uh, vote buying is a very complex issue. Just like I was heading, it's not just one or agency or one organization that can put an end to it. There is the responsibility of the National Assembly. There is the responsibility of the judiciary. Before now, INEC has been advocating. I think in 2000 and, uh, 2015 elections, INEC said there were over 900 incidences during the election. They could not prosecute up to 50. Now we know that when people get away with crime, there's no deterrence. But if people are prosecuted and are punished, then there is a deterrence. That's why I said that there is a responsibility of the lawmakers. The lawmakers have to come out and say, vote buying is a problem. And we need is it that they are going to enact laws? Because then when it gets to the judiciary, the judiciary also have to come and say, we have to play our part and ensure that people involved in this are duly prosecuted. So you see, it's a, it's, it's a it, chain thing. Yes, yeah. it's a, a chain reaction and that involves everybody. So when I go out to vote on election day, I'm not just leaving the responsibility on INEC and the EFCC. If I see somebody canvassing for votes, I will point, point them out. to the EFCC and say, there's somebody here. He has to be arrested. All right. Thank you very much. We're, 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 I don't know if you have any yeah, further I just, I just wanted to quickly okay. move away from INEC and talk about uh, the uh, governor-elect now, uh, as declared by INEC. Um, what would you say are the reasons he was able to, of course, uh, get re-elected? I, after the elections, I tried to speak to one or two people who had been on ground, and I agree with, with one of their submission. I think the, in, the PDP didn't do their work well, because why I would say so is this. Election involves many players. The PDP candidate, Eita Ojegede, is from Akure. By right, that is the seat of governance. And you know that he, he won a landslide in Akure. Now, because he was in Akure and you have every, most stakeholders there, the press and the rest. So it, there's a tendency for everything he does there to be exaggerated. So people felt, but in reality, he did not go and sell himself to other communities. Or that, now, let me tell you about the Edo election. People say... Uh, uh, Obaseki won and the rest. Let me tell you what Obaseki did. It was simple. The APC had a white followership in Edo State. What Obaseki did was his situation room began to reach out to undecided voters who are the youths via phone call on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Right. So you see within the last two weeks he was able to get across to undecided voters. That was what they would have done in Edo State. All right. All right. Thank you very much, Amadine Uyi, for your time and for the work that you do for Plus TV Africa, I must say. <laughs> Amazing work. Thank you. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.